In the summer of 1886, 39 Apaches ran for their lives across the desert of the southwest United States toward the Sierra Madre Mountains of Mexico. They were being pursued by a unit of 5,000 American soldiers. They ran and they ran for many months to escape capture and eventual imprisonment, with the fastest pace being around 80 miles a day. The team of 39 was being primarily led by a warrior and medicine man of the Badonkahe Band of Chiricahua named Goyathle, one who yawns. Many refer to him by his more common name, Geronimo. On September 4th of that same year, Geronimo finally surrendered to American troops at Skeleton Canyon. He spent the rest of his life as a prisoner of war, dying in 1909 of pneumonia at Fort Sill Military Base in Oklahoma. His body was buried on the base in the Prisoner of War Cemetery, where it still remains to this day. In 2009, the 100th anniversary of Geronimo's death, one Mescalero Apache, claiming to be the warrior's great-grandson, filed a repatriation lawsuit at the U.S. court in Washington, D.C., requesting that his ancestors' remains be returned to the Gila Wilderness of Arizona. Harlan Geronimo claims that it is important to Apache culture that a person be buried close to their place of birth. The lawsuit references the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, or NAGPRA, a legislation passed in 1990 that required federal agencies and federally funded museums and organizations to return artifacts and human remains to the original tribes. Repatriation of ancestral remains and or sacred objects has been a continuous struggle for many Native American peoples. Some cases of successful repatriation, such as the return of the sacred pole to the Omaha people in 1989, occurred even before NAGPRA was put into effect. In that case, the Omaha unanimously agreed to have the sacred pole returned to them. In the case concerning Geronimo's remains, the Apache tribal members have been in dispute as to whether or not the warrior's remains should be repatriated. Not long after Harlan filed the lawsuit, two separate groups of Apache opposed the repatriation. One man, Larry Geronimo, also claims to be a great-grandson of Goyathle and states that Harlan does not have a legitimate claim to Geronimo's family line. Lariat, speaking as the voice for a few of his supporting relatives, says that it's Apache tradition to not disturb a body once it's buried. Once you're in the ground, that's it, Lariat says. You've got to move on. The Fort Sill Apache tribe also opposed the lawsuit, saying that all members of, Geronim of the Geronimo family must agree before their remains can go anywhere. One must question in this particular case what Apache burial customs are really like. The best way to examine this is to look at history, starting with the life of Geronimo himself. Early in Geronimo's life, he fell in love and married a slender woman by the name of Alope. The couple had three children together and raised them according to traditional Apache customs. One day in the early 1950s, while returning home from a trade deal in the Mexican town of Hanos, a handful of Chiricahuas, including Geronimo, was met with the distressing news that their settlement had been ransacked by Mexican soldiers. When he reached camp, Geronimo discovered his wife, mother, and three young children brutally murdered. According to tradition, Geronimo cut his hair and left it at the site as a sign of mourning. It is known among Chiricahua that short hair was a sign that a person had lost someone close to them. Sources say that according to traditional Apache custom that had been carried out for generations upon the death of a loved one, Geronimo set everything his wife and children had owned on fire. 
Given this understanding of Geronimo's own actions for honoring the dead, the argument posted by Lariat Geronimo seems the most credible. However, Geronimo's final wishes during his years of imprisonment at Fort Sill may complicate the issue. In 1905, Geronimo pleaded with President Teddy Roosevelt to have his people sent back to Arizona. Geronimo wrote to the president, It is my land, my home, my father's land, to which I now ask to be allowed to return. I want to spend my last days there, he wrote, and be buried among those mountains. If this could be, I might die in peace, said the old warrior, then 81 years old. To Geronimo's dismay, the president declined his request on the grounds that the anti-Apache hostility in Arizona was too high to guarantee a safe return. Would Geronimo still have wanted for his body to rest among those mountains, knowing that it would have, have to be exhumed from a long-standing grave site to do so? Should the determining factor of his final resting place be that of Apache tradition and cultural belief, or that of the last wishes of the warrior himself? These questions cannot e easily be answered. For now, Geronimo's body is at the mercy of the U.S. legal system, of which it has been since before it was even in the ground.